Good morning, everyone. My name is Scott Morris. I am the Director of Business Development for GTS Distribution, and we are here today talking with Leo and Sam from Mythic Games. Leo is one of the co-owners. Sam, as you may have seen from his face, is very recognizable. He is from the Dice Tower in the past, and now he is part of the, I uh, guess, marketing team and, and, Matt and media side of Mythic Games as well. Um, you have probably seen Mythic Games before in the past. They have done quite a bit on Kickstarter, and they are moving now into retail uh, in the U.S. with us. This first game, Super Fantasy Brawl, which we're going to talk about today, is wickedly awesome. Uh, I am a big <laughs> believer in minis skirmish battle games. I love them. I think they are tremendous. I think they're a great way to generate you know, a lot of play in the store and a lot of repurchasability. And this game is going to hit on a lot of those things, plus some things you've probably never heard before, which is really, really cool. So I don't want to steal all their thunder. I'll let them tell you everything that's awesome about it. Um, if you are a retailer and this is your first time here, though, it's really easy to interact. As I always tell everybody, everything is on the table, so you're welcome to ask any questions you like. There is a chat window that if you are on a computer, you can hover over the bottom and there's a little chat bubble you can pop up. Um, if you're on your phone, you can just hit the menu button and then it'll come up with a chat option. Um, the chat window is available for either sending messages to all panelists, which are myself, Leo, and Sam, or you can send messages to panelists and attendees, which will go to all the retailers as well. Um, but as I told Sam earlier, Leo, you and Sam don't need to worry about the chat window. I will monitor it. I'll check it out and ask questions. Thank you. And I'll work them into the conversation. So um, other than that, really want to thank all the retailers for taking their time to join us. I really want to thank Leo and Sam for taking the time to join us. This is a really cool game with a really cool company, and we're really excited to talk about it. So I'm going to let my face that was made for radio shut up, and I'm going to let you guys take over. And whoever wants to start talking can start talking. <laughs> Go ahead, Leo, take it away. Okay, all right. Well, first of all, uh, I want to thank everybody who's watching and everybody who's interested in Super Fantasy Brawl. Uh, as Scott said, uh, we've been on Kickstarter for some time and I must say that we've never had uh, as many people asking for us to go to retail than with this game, Super Fantasy Brawl. Uh, we were very surprised at the success we had. I mean, we, we knew it was a great game, but we were not even anticipating the success it would have. And uh, I'm very pleased with the way we have designed the game and uh, how it's going to be interesting uh, in retail just as much and if not more than uh, on Kickstarter. And why is that? Well, we raised a, a big community already but what we, we thought uh, we would do and we would have to do was to, to, to offer a game, uh, to offer something for retailers, something, a reason for the existing community to go to retail. And this is exactly what we're doing. Uh, during the initial game, we had something like 15 champions uh, offered. Uh, this is a, a great game, very, very fast to set up with great minis. Uh, you learn it in five minutes, you play it in 20 minutes. It's really uh, that sort of game. Uh, but what we do with the retail version is that we will have exclusive uh, versions, uh, champions for retail. As soon as it's coming to retail, uh, you will have things that you cannot have, uh, you didn't have in the Kickstarter. So when the, the game hits retail, uh, all the backers will go to retail to have the new champions. Uh, every new champions that we will provide will be new. They've, they've, they've never heard of it and they want to, to have this new, this new champion. Uh, Super Fantasy Brawl has been a hit every time we've played it, we've demoed it. I mean, I've never seen someone play test the game and not fall in love with it. Uh, and this is really what it does. It's, uh, it's super fast, it's really beautiful, it's very fast to set up, it's cheap. I mean, compared to what we offer, uh, even the retail version is really very, very affordable. So I think, and we, we really want to do uh, something with the retailers. We want to have organized play. We want uh, to support this game. Uh, and I can tell you guys that we have already one year planned and done and produced uh, in terms of graphic, of uh, sculpt, of art, of design, one year ahead uh, uh, of production. So when, we, when, when uh, Super Fantasy Brawl hits retail, 
you guys must know that we have one year of production that is already planned and done. Mm. That yeah. is really some cool stuff. And I want to I wanna touch on two different things that you talked <laughs> about real quick, Leo, and kind of hammer home the point with a lot of our retailers. It is extremely rare, like extremely rare, that I ever hear the phrase retail exclusive. Very, very rarely. And retailers, you know this. I'm, I'm preaching to the choir on this. It's usually the, the things you hear are Target exclusive or Barnes & Noble's exclusive and things like that, which never helps retail, right? In this case, this is a company who is bringing two of the expansions specifically to retailers, plus more content, additional things. It's unique. It's very different. And if I was a retailer and had the ability to, A, sell a game that is obviously very popular and very beautiful and very good, but also do it with a way to tell my consumers, hey, you can only get these things from me as a retailer, that's a huge selling point and a great opportunity, I think, for the, the retail community for stuff. Uh, just so everybody knows, I put into the webinar chat the information about the game that we're talking about. So there is a core box for Super Fantasy Brawl that is a $45 SRP. Uh, it has six miniatures in it and everything you need to play for two players, which is awesome. Um, and then there are additional expansions that are going to be ready at the time that the game is released. One of them is kind of an aesthetic expansion, which is statues for the, the main board. And then there are three expansions called Khalees, Lorelei, and Al uh, King Alistair. The Khalees and the King Alistair are the ones that are exclusive to retail. So I put yes. all those notes into the, the uh, webinar chat, so you're welcome to grab those. The other thing you can do is if you're looking on gtsdistribution.com, you can search for Mythic Games, and you'll see everything on our, our page from them. Um, we just literally this morning got some great box shots of the expansions and stuff to add onto there. So looks really good. I'll go ahead and put the link in to chat as well for that, just so everyone's got a, a direct link for that too. But these are all up all set up, ready to be ordered right now. Um, and I don't know, Sam, if you want to talk a little bit about kind of the order time frame, like that March 25th time frame we were talking about and things like that. Yeah, it's uh, end of March is when we, we need to get those pre-orders in. Uh, production has already started and uh, it is, it's, it's at the factory right now. Uh, as soon as um, uh, we get the pre-orders in, we'll, we'll be able to uh, start getting them and rolling them out. Mm, uh, and I think maybe Leo can uh, uh, either correct me or back me up on this. I believe we're going for a general release around the Gen Con area, I believe. Yes, um, probably. Well, you know, the, the only doubt we have is uh, how the coronavirus is going to right. impact uh, production because we were, well, uh, production uh, started, we're supposed to start after the Chinese New Year. The Chinese New Year was, was postponed because of the outbreak. Uh, and now they said uh, production has started actually, uh, but they said compared to uh, the initial dates we had, uh, they said it would probably take a month uh, more, but then we don't know, we are following uh, you know, the situation over there. But saying uh, that this should hit uh, Gen Con is, so far safe and so far uh, this is what we can count on and taking but then we need also to know uh, how things are going to to happen and we won't be uh, the only one every only ones everyone will be uh, affected uh, obviously but yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I had like <laughs> over a dozen conversations over the weekend with publishers who are having challenges with their their factories either not going back to work or going back to work with like a skeleton crew and things yeah. like that so the really nice thing, though, um, and we haven't talked about this yet, is that uh, if you're a retail customer of GTS and you pre-order the game by March 25th, you're also going to be eligible for an early advance release. So the weeks. general release date will be set once we know more yeah. shipping time frame, and then retailers who pre-ordered are going to be able to get that two weeks in advance, and that's only for brick-and-mortar stores. So online sellers don't get that. No one else gets that. That's just brick-and-mortar stores. So that also is a great advantage. And there's one of the things that I think, um, you know, just from my position in distribution, I want to thank you guys for taking the time to think about things like that for the retail community. Um, it shows that, you know, while you have had success on Kickstarter, you're understanding the needs of the retail community oh, yeah. which they're looking for, which I think is great. Yeah. What we really wanted is the community, the existing community, to want to go to retail to have things that they couldn't have. 
you know? So they will receive the game, they will play with it. And then they, knows that, they know that if they want these new champions and they are designed exactly as the others, like we've worked a lot on them, they are exciting there, but they will, they will find them nowhere else but in retail. So uh, we, want to, we wanted to mix the two communities and say, uh, they, you shouldn't just oppose the two communities. We sh you should uh, uh, gather them, you know, and right. uh, this is exactly what's gonna happen. Of course, we'll reach some new people with the, uh, uh, the retail release, but we also want the existing community to be interested in that. And this is why we have these exclusive champions uh, that, will, that will make the game evolve because uh, adding a new champion is, in this game is not just like an optional thing that you want. It changes the whole meta game. You know, it's uh, uh, the combinations that you, you have with all the champions that you draft uh, are, are enhanced every time you add a new one. And each yeah. new champion has their own uh, 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 specificities, their own way uh, of uh, the way they work, the way they you, they play, uh, and uh, the interactions. It's 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 really uh, something. Well, the strongest things you could you could add. It's not just like a, a little expansion uh, that adds something uh, uh, fancy, or it's it's really the core of the game that is evolving with the new releases that we are planning to have for retail. Yeah. One of the things that I like about the uh, addition of more champions is the way that you actually set up the game. Uh, you, uh, you can either have just a general draft or a competitive draft. And that competitive draft is where having these other expansions are really going to shine because uh, one player will bring, I think it's five of their own champions that they own and they'll be able to pick from that five group of five the other player will also bring their group of five which may be completely different from your group of five and so when they draft their first one they're like then you can say okay i know what that guy does and this guy over here is going to be able to combat that so i'm going to choose this guy and now they chose that guy okay i'm going to choose this guy over here and you keep doing that until you have uh three champions to go into the fray with so that's just another way that the, the competitive or even when we get into organized play, um, that's going to really shine uh, as far as tournaments are concerned. And, and if, so, if you want to be competitive, you need to, to know what's coming to retail. You, you need to know uh, all the champions. You can't just ignore them. It would be so that means, yes, it has to leave through retail, through organized play and so on. You just can't just just uh, count on, on uh, what was uh, on the Kickstarter. Sure. Yeah. Alex has a great question, and I actually don't even know the answer to this one. I've played the game four times myself and love it, but um, he has a question. He says, does the addition of more champions allow more players in the game, or will it still only be a two-player game with more champions to choose from? Well, in my opinion, I think it's a two-player game, but it does have rules that you can play with four. Okay. Um, and I've played it with four and it's good. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but it really does shine as a two player game, uh, mm -hmm. which lends itself more to organized play anyway. Um, because in my opinion, it, it feels like one of my, one of my most favorite games and it's from a competitor. I'm sorry, Leo. Um, That's okay. uh, is... <laughs> I, I want you to be always honest. You have to say always. Um, it's, uh, it, but Warhammer Underworld Shadespire has, a very similar feel to this, but it's on a different echelon as far as um, as far as the complexity is concerned. Because yeah, this, with this is a much simpler game, yes, absolutely to learn um, and to play. Yes, exactly. Shadespire has a lot of different uh, components that you have to learn: the deck building, um, uh, how you're going to uh, build your deck of of goals, and all of that kind of stuff. So it has a lot of I guess, meat that you can dig into. Super Fantasy Brawl has the same kind of meat, but it doesn't take, it, the complexity isn't there. The tactics, the strategy is still there. Um, how fast the game plays is still there. It's actually faster than Shadespire. Um, and uh, on top oh, yeah. of that, there's no, there's no assembly of miniatures or anything like that as well. Now, I, I, don't, I don't mind assembling miniatures myself, but I know there's a lot of people out there that just don't have the time for that. Um, and these miniatures are, first of all, <laughs> super good. And oh, yeah. uh, on oh, top yeah. of that, oh, yeah. oh, now you can't proud. just say that and not put one up to the camera. All right, here we go. This, this guy is called Goldar. 
And uh, he you is. See, uh, this is the plastic mini. This is it's fully assembled. You don't need to assemble. You you was talking about Chase Fire, which is a great game, uh, but you need to assemble your minis. Well, they've made some efforts to make it easy, but here everything yes. is pre-assembled and uh, the quality, the detail. I mean, it's yes. as crisp as what we had uh, with the, the resin uh, versions. Sometimes some people even like them better. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, we are. Now, no, no, you, they're not. They're not you, were noti you were noticed. You were noticed. You were. You were telling me that they were. They were big. This is not even the biggest one. Uh, oh. He's the second biggest one. Here is uh, Kilgore. He's your goblin character, and he is uh, bigger than troll. I mean, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. He's a troll. Correct. Yeah. Sorry. Um, here, here's the pirate, and there's Goldar. Uh, there's Goldar over here, and then uh, Kilgore is over here. You can see what a regular human looks like yes. next to him. Gwen is like this right yes, here. Yes, you see. <laughs> yeah, they're beautiful. I've actually had a chance to see these in person, the the plastic versions of them, and they look absolutely great. Um, yeah. Alex just asked a question. He said, "Are the minis pre-primed?" That's a good question. I don't know about that. Oh. Uh, that I don't know. No, either. I don't think they are. No. Okay. They're yeah. not. That, that should be easy enough just to use a spray primer if somebody wants. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we, we wanted like uh, the price to be affordable. So sure. they are pre assembled. They're not primed. They're not painted. Uh, yeah. You, the nice thing about the miniatures, in my opinion, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a mini painter myself. I'm like Sam. I do a lot of skirmish games and a lot of assembly and painting and all that. Um, I actually have a prototype copy of this game and I started messing around and painting with one of them. The minis have, and, and you can kind of see it there from Sam's video, um, the, the minis have a lot of large space on them. There's, there's, while there's a lot of intricate details on them, you can see there like on his tunic, he has like, you know, the little rivets and the chains and stuff like that. Even if you're just like an average painter, it's really hard to mess these up. Oh yeah because there's such good detail. But like you can see there, like the arm area, even the armband has enough space to be able to get a good size brush in there and paint it and everything. So I was really impressed by that actually, so. And the good thing with the competitive like deck. A great customized also. option, that's awesome. Yeah, the, the good thing with the, the competitive uh, draft is that you come with your five minis. Uh, you can paint them, there's no problem. Uh, you will play with your own minis, you know, there's no such thing as uh, playing with the minis of someone else. So you can absolutely uh, customize them, you can paint them, you can do whatever you want and play with them, uh, even in organized play and tournaments. Uh, the way it works, you, you come with five minis, uh, your opponent comes with five minis, and then you, you look at what they have and you will say, okay, I'll ban one of your minis, then the other will say, okay, I'll ban one of your minis, and then you start saying, okay, I'll play with this one. Then based on this choice, the other one will say, I'll play with this one. And then you end up choosing three uh, out of the four remaining minis that you have. This is how a competitive draft uh, will, will be. And it will remind people uh, of some video games uh, like uh, League of Legends and, and, and these sorts of things. This is the, the format and uh, how it works. On, on the other side, you can also play with draft. If you buy a box, uh, whether one box or one box with expansions and you are uh, with your friends and families and they don't need to all come with one box, you can simply play uh, the casual drafting, which is you, you, you add all of the minis you have, all of the champions, and you start drafting one of them uh, each uh, uh, at one, one time. So you play with your existing minis and it works perfectly as well. And you will have different minis and different champions playing. And so the more champions you have, the more combinations you have, and 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 then you will have some different matchups, which is which is which is cool. It's it's a very nice aspect of this game. It's uh, yeah, you have this drafting aspect, uh, but then it's it's not too complicated and too long, and you don't need to know too much before you start playing, which is great as well. Yeah, the first time I was actually introduced to the game uh, was overseas at the UK Games Expo last year. Um, and one of the Mythic employees sat me down and he said, okay, here's what you do. You have those three manis. I have these three manis. Each of them comes with six cards. Shuffle them together, draw your hand, and we're ready to go. And I'm yes, like, that's, uh, that's it? <laughs> I was like, yeah. And he's like, yeah. And it was amazing. It was just so much fun. Because that's really what you do. E each of the characters come with their own deck of cards, which is a very small deck of cards. 
And as uh, Leo mentioned earlier, they all have a specific kind of, you know, affinity to different types of combat and things like that. And then you shuffle them together. So even playing with just switching out one mini from one team to another champion is going to be a completely different experience for the players and just open up so much replay. Even, even if you didn't want to go through the, the draft process and simply do that at random, it would still work. You just draw three, three champions at random, you play against three other champions at random, and it's still fun to play. Because uh, the, the good thing with this game is you can do combos and you always have to make a decision based on what you have in your hand. So you have some cards, you see what you have, you have to, to choose whether you have three colors, you can only play one color uh, during your turn, one color uh, per turn. So you have three colors, so you can play three different colors. And, you, and if you have more than one color in your hand, you have to choose whether it's interesting to play this one or the other one. But it's very, very simple. And, but in the end, you, you still have to, to think and adapt uh, your strategy to your existing hand. So it's, it's always uh, uh, fun to play uh, and not too complicated. This is one of the strong aspects of this game. It's very appealing to a large audience, but it's still very, very clever. And once you get to know the game well, you will beat the others. But even a, new, a beginner will have fun playing it because that's how it is. It's very simple. Yeah, Sam's showing some of the cards right there, which are yeah. really so, well. Popular. I wanted to show him since he was talking about the different colors. They're different, uh, basically schools of magic uh, that you're employing during your during the course of your turn. You can actually activate the same character up to three times, um, sure but yeah. as long as you don't use the same school of magic more than once, uh, that's that's your your general restriction, I guess you could say. But the freedom that's there is that you can, if you want to, use the same guy three times, uh, and that'll be the end of your turn. Or you can use three different people um, as long as they are uh, not using the same school of magic. But it, it's, it's, it's all based upon the cards that you play. Um, so you have uh, the uh, red, yellow, and blue schools of magic. And then the cards here are, are also pretty self-explanatory. They'll have the kind of card that it's up here in the... Uh, uh, top, what is that, uh, right-hand side of the card. And then down here, you have the effects uh, within gameplay. And then down here, it's a special effect that will occur uh, if you use this thing. And um, there are some effects that happen before attacks. There's some effects that happen after attacks. And there's a freedom there as well. Um, if it happens uh, before attack, you can use that special <laughs> ability. But then you don't have to carry out the actual attack. But with a post-attack ability, you do have to carry out the attack in order to carry out the special ability. So there's, there's a lot of nuance there that uh, is, is pretty cool uh, with this deck system. And it doesn't overload you because, you know, with something like uh, Shadespire, you've got these 30-card decks that, and, and a lot of the cards do so many different things, that's not really here. Um, you've got, uh, uh, what is it, uh, you've got six card decks for each of the different yep. champions. Um, and so you're, you're talking about, what is that, six times three is, is 18? 18. Yeah, yeah, there you go, math, math stinks. <laughs> really. um, but you've got 18 cards in your deck, you know, that's it. And so you know what's there, you know what's coming up. Um, if you have to draw a card and, and, and your, your deck is gone, you just reshuffle. Um, so there isn't, I mean, it's, it's got all this strategy and tactics there, but it's just not, it doesn't- It's in a very over, simplistic form. Right, it doesn't overtax your brain. And, and yeah. that's the cool thing about that means that there's gonna be a huge number of people that are just gonna really enjoy getting into it. Yeah, so we've and had a Sam. Of questions. Um, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, we've had a couple of questions come in, um, and a couple of them are very, very good. Um, the first one is from Tabitha. It says, are there also figures from the Kickstarter campaign that may be exclusive to the Kickstarter and limit a new player's ability to compete if they're buying from retail? Um, I don't remember that piece of the Kickstarter too much, so I will let you guys answer that as to if there was any. Well, this is something we absolutely wanted to avoid. So there yeah. were no exclusive Kickstarter exclusives, minis that somebody can come to, uh, you know, a tournament and just say, oh, look, I have this, we can't have it. None 
of the minis that were on Kickstarter were exclusives. They will all come to retail and be sold as, as the others. So that's we great. had that's no great. such thing. Yeah, that's great. And, and with, the, with the combination of all of those being available, plus the ones that are exclusive for retail, that just helps yeah. the game grow even more in retail. Yeah. We knew that uh, the life, the game will, would have uh, the, his real life uh, during retail because you need organized play. You need, for, for these sorts of game, you need to be able to organize a tournament, uh, to do some, uh, some events, uh, to do some programs, to, to have people play the game regularly and not just at home. Of course, people will still play at home uh, and they will have fun because that's how the game is. But the game is really, uh, is really cool when you, with uh, some tournaments, some organized plays, some, uh, some events. Uh, and we knew that in order to do that, we had to go to retail. And this, this game has been planned for retail ever since we, we, we imagined it. Uh, so we went to, to Kickstarter just to start gathering a community, but having always in mind that we, the ultimate goal was to go to retail. This is why we have exclusive for retails and that we didn't have any for uh, Kickstarter. That's great. That's great. Um, another question that was asked, and this is a great follow-up to the organized play discussion. Um, Kimberly asked, are there organized play rules or details that are published online somewhere? And is there any prize support for organized play? I know the answers to that, but I'll let you guys take that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have an answer, Sam? Well, we haven't got there yet. Um, but the planning, the plan is there. That's where we want to go. Um, we wanted to... Uh, it, the, the thought is there. That's that's the main thing that uh, we're we're trying to get here. And uh, while we haven't don't we don't have anything online per se just yet, it will be coming uh, in the future. Yeah, and if you have now between now and Gen Con or maybe a little bit after Gen Con, that's oh that's yeah, a good amount we, of time. we we have some documents that we haven't shared yet. Uh, <laughs> we but we will, of course, we will. Yes, yeah. absolutely, yes. Uh, and I do, we know I do, there is some prize support planned for the OP as well. Right? Oh yeah, 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 there is. There definitely is. Uh, but we also want to talk with use cards uh, with the, the retailers and see what is what is it because we have some, our own ideas. But we also want to see what you know the retailers want. What what they think is more appropriate. This is sure. also uh, very important before we commit to doing something. We want to make sure and have enough discussions uh, to, be, to be sure that is exactly what, you know, the, 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 the people want. What, yeah, and uh, the more competitions that happen and the more game plays and events that happen in retail, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people going, you know, it would be awesome. Like if we just had this, yeah. this would be amazing. Yeah, exactly. Like, exactly. Right? You know, this is a habit we have with Kickstarter. We are very close to our community and we listen to their suggestions when there's something good that is coming up. If we can do it, we do it. And that's, and I don't see why it shouldn't be the case for retail as well. We, we don't want to come with something planned and we don't want to, to go off the, the rails. We want to be able to adapt and, and do something uh, appropriate and something expected and good, good ideas uh, and good suggestions uh, should be followed. Sure. Yeah. Um, Alex had a question, um, which I'll probably answer right now. Um, he said, will there be a demo program available? Um, so most retailers know that we do have a demo program with GTS. Um, we haven't lined that up yet with Mythic Games, but that's something we can talk about outside of this and see if we can get them set up. It, it definitely would be a very good game to obviously have on demo because it is very, very easy to teach, very, very simple to get into it. As Sam said, it is very fast. I've played the game four times. I've never had a game go longer than 30 minutes. It goes very, very quick. Um, and that's with people of all kinds. I, I've played with people from Mythic and I've played with people who are just casual gamers and, and not hardcore gamers. So it's always very, very quick. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we'll, know, we'll talk yeah. about a demo possibility for sure. So Absolutely. Becky yeah. has a really, really, really good question. This is one of my favorite questions. The, I'm going to quote her exactly. The question I always have is what size of sleeves will players need for the cards? So are the cards <laughs> traditional poker size or are they some custom size or anything like that? Well, I think um, they're poker size, right, uh, Sam? They're, they're, 
they're very close to that. I don't, I don't play poker often. So, I mean, but they are normal size cards. Um, like, have, like Magic the Gathering. So I think it's poker size. Yes. Really. Yeah, the ones yeah. that I have from the prototype that you guys sent are, they all fit in normal, regular sleeves. So there's yeah. no need to, to get any kind of oversized sleeves or anything. Right. Absolutely. But I mean, yes. I, I have kind of thick fingers and this gives you an idea of how big the cards are. <laughs> so I think it's go. really like Magic the Gathering and poker sized cards. Sure. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yes. Normal, uh, traditional sleeves will work. Yep. Um, Although, Alex... we could, yeah, we could do some, you know, some special uh, uh, sleeves. We did that uh, during the Kickstarter in the Pledge Manager. I, I don't oh, know okay. if this is something we should carry to retail or if we should leave people buy their own sleeves. But yes, it's, that, it's that's definitely a good the standard size. question for retailers is, you know, yeah. if you're a retailer listening and you think, <laughs> you know, custom sleeves are a good idea, just let me know. You can always email me. It should, yeah, should let, should let us know. Information <laughs> over yeah, definitely. Um, Alex has a good question. So he says, um, will organized play include minis or is it too early to tell? And then he says, card sleeves would be a great organized play kit participation project. Oh, yeah, true, true, yeah. true. Absolutely, yes. I, I think right uh, now, um, I don't want to spoil anything, but I do think the plan is there may be some minis involved with organized play, but again, that's developing, right? So it's that, that's still kind of in motion to figure out. Yeah, you know, even, the, well, if we did something like that, it, would, it wouldn't be, uh, again, we don't want exclusive things. We don't want to prevent uh, some people from playing a super interesting champion because, you know, it was only won by someone or, what we would probably do is uh, uh, a variant of some existing minis, you know, like a skin or something a little different or uh, an alternate pose or an alternate mini or existing mini, probably something like that. But we, yes, we have to reward people for tournaments and they like to have exclusive things, but what we don't want to do is do exclusive gameplay things, you see? Right, right. Uh, we want, and that helps want the community everybody. grow, right? Yeah. That way no yes. one's left out, no one feels as though they're missing out on anything. Right. Exactly. It helps from a retailer perspective to be able to promote the game, right? They can tell people, yeah. hey, while there is a bit of a collectability piece in this, there's no chasing. Yeah. You're not going to have to like, you know, go, go crazy and find a bunch of things exactly. on the party market or yeah. anything like that. Absolutely, but, yes. So. And uh, I'm not going to say that I have or haven't seen some of the champions that may be coming in the future, but they're pretty freaking awesome. <laughs> so I'm, I'm pretty wow, excited. yes, right. oh yes, oh yes. I know that people will absolutely fall in love with them. Just like, I mean, the strongest point again of this game is its gameplay value. Yeah. Uh, and, and then of course the looks uh, of the game, you know, the mix of traditional card game and, and minis really work well. But uh, I have to tell again to retailers, just try and make a demo of this game. Just let people play. The yeah. first time they'll play, they, they, they want the game. They, they, will, they will buy it. I, I'm so confident about this game uh, that I can tell you that. And because of the, the, the reactions we had, we did really better than expected on, on, on Kickstarter. Again, we went on Kickstarter. Just It was ready. It was ready for retail. We just went there. But the reactions we saw were incredible and i know that uh, the people who went to kickstarter they they want to have the new champions that we have created and a lot of them have special stories linked to the existing uh minis that we already released so it's really the continuation it's the same artists that did them the same sculptors uh it's uh it's not something uh uh underrated it's really the same quality that we did and it's exactly what we we could have offered on kickstarter but didn't you know we uh, so and we have one year of release ready so we really are committed and we really believe in uh, the organized play and the life of this game in retail that's awesome uh, nice. Alex had a really good suggestion. He said uh, superhero parody skins would be cool, like different Marvel or DC inspired skins. Uh, as well as <laughs> don't, you know, get into as like- As long as there's IP no idea, you know, yeah. <laughs> Yes, we are open to all sorts of suggestions. Some people uh, also mention like uh, some, some special American sports uh, things like, you know, that we could do like- oh, uh, Like a football player like, maybe or something. Yeah, or something. yeah, 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 exactly. And everything is possible and yeah, we can go like fun things, you know, if it's uh, just a skin, you know, yeah. as long as you recognize uh, the hero, 
you can play with the existing cars or even new new art i, I don't know but yeah something like that as long as it's not gameplay exclusive it and has that, to that be, uh, skin idea kind of speaks to the moba players right so yeah, if, any of, if any of our retailers yes. are unfamiliar with moba that stands for multiplayer online battle arena uh, the yeah. biggest game is probably League of Legends, but there are a ton of others, both on mobile devices and on computers as well. Um, and it is a huge esport. It, it's something like I think last time I read, it's like a four billion dollar industry for esports for for just mobiles, which is pretty amazing. Um, which tells me I might be in the wrong business, but that's okay. It's still fun to watch. <laughs> um, and this game is very MOBA-like in the sense of you have different champions, you have the different abilities, you're activating different ones at different times, or as Sam said, you're activating the same one multiple times possibly. But the interesting thing to me is I play a lot of skirmish games. Like I play, I've played a lot of Kill Team, played a lot of uh, uh, Shadespire, Underworlds, and things like that. Whenever I play those games, it's generally a one and done. Not forever, but what I mean is I'll sit down, we'll set it up, we'll play one game, and then we're done and we put it back in the box and put it back on the shelf and move on to something else. Because it usually takes at least an hour, if not a little more, to, to play those games. And when you're at a game night and you only have maybe, you know, three hours or three and a half hours to play, you may not want to play the same thing over and over if it takes an hour to an hour and a half to play. Every single time that I've played Super Fantasy Brawl, the people I've played with are immediately like, you want to play again? Like instantaneously, <laughs> right? the minute oh, the game yeah. oh, yeah. because it's oh, so yeah. fast. So I mean, all so of my true. games have ended in 30 minutes, and it's so fast paced. There's a lot of good strategy in terms of like picking and choosing your, your abilities and what cards you want to use, but it's never a case of like analysis paralysis. You're oh. never stuck there with like 20 options. You, you basically have three options of what you're going to do and you either do them and move on or you be defensive and you come back a little bit and it just offers so much variability in such a great package. So yeah, yeah. I've, been, I've been thrilled with it. The whole yep. team uh, at Gen Con would do like, just casual tournaments uh, you know we would go to the restaurant and play super fantasy bro and we wouldn't do that with our other games which are longer you know yeah. uh, so yeah. it's exactly as you said and we would have fun and we, we we played and we do that all the time yeah it's it's really that kind of game it's very accessible it's important that people really realize it's it's something that is very suited to uh, to retail uh, that is fast and, and and easy to play easy to access it uh, doesn't take too long and still uh, challenging. It's still interesting and very, uh, yeah, it, it reminds me of uh, uh, the beginning of Magic. You know, Magic the Gathering. Uh, sure. you, that's what the reactions I see remind me uh, of this uh, easy to play, very addictive game. Uh, uh, you want to play another game again. Uh, it doesn't last too long. It's not too complicated. It's... Uh, it's, uh, it's this sort of game. But of course, if you are good at this game, you will beat some other. It's not just pure luck and just, uh, it, I mean, when you know the game, you, you become strong and good and better than the others. So, yep. That's another, that's, that's, another, that's another selling point. With Shadespire, you've got the dice that, that could really kind of defeat you. Um, yeah, yeah. With Super Fantasy Brawl, there's no dice. Uh, it's, no dice. It, it's simple strategy and tactics. And the person that's uh, better in those two areas is going to win. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. For sure. And in ways, it kind of reminded me, <clears throat> and this is a throwback, <laughs> but in ways, it kind of reminded me of the WoW miniatures game, the World of Warcraft miniatures game, which unfortunately had a very short life, but uh, it was a really, really cool yeah, style skirmish true. game. I agree. Yeah, yeah, um, agreed. And this is even easier than that. You know, I mean, just oh, yeah. the ability to say, take my six cards from all three of my champions, shuffle them together and get playing. It's like super, super fast, which is really, really cool. Um, there's been no more questions that have come in right now. So I just want to take a second and kind of remind all the retailers uh, about the high level overview stuff. Um, if you haven't seen it yet at the very top of the chat window, I put in information about um, uh, linking to the GTS page to see all of the products. I'm going to go ahead and put it in again one more time just so everybody has it as well as, <clears throat> excuse me, the SKUs for all the products as well. Um, and again, there's a core box, and then there are four expansions. Three of the expansions are champions that you can add to the game. And then one is that aesthetic kind of statue, uh, oh. three-dimensional miniatures that will They add. are really gorgeous. We, we yes. have to say these are not just statues. Yes. I mean, they were important in the game. Sam, can you tell them about what the statues uh, are? Yeah. And what they do in the they're, game? They're, they're more than just statues. They're actual, like, 
control points during the course of the game and you actually can get the, the, the general point of the game is, to, is, is kind of a race to get five victory points first. And you can do that by controlling certain areas of the board or by accomplishing certain objectives that are in a uh, public pool off to the side of the board. Uh, and a lot of those objectives also are concerned with controlling these three different statues that are in the middle of the board. And uh, so they're much more than just an aesthetic uh, addition. They also are, um, well, I guess, honestly, they are just an aesthetic addition because you can play the game without them, yeah. but why would you want to? Um, because yeah, they add so much in <laughs> They add so know? much, and they, they add another 3D element. When you're, element when you're pushed it. on a statue, you take damage, yeah. you see? Yes. And so you can really yeah. see that, and they also will block your line of sight, right. you know? So it, it's, it's more uh, obvious when you have them. Yes. And, and finally, they represent the three school, well, they, they are the three master mages uh, yes. in, in the three yeah. colors. You have one red, one blue, and one yellow. Right. Uh, Mage. The statues are, do not have those colors, but they represent these three uh, super strong uh, and uh, original mages in the game. Mm. So, and they're yeah. big. They're really big. Yes. I mean, it's not like a small statue. They're huge, and uh, and and they add uh, immersion to to your to your game. So, mm -hmm. I mean, they are pretty irresistible. When you look at them, you really really want to have them on the board, and they, they add. You don't confuse them with uh, the champions. They are bigger. Uh, they look like a statue. So yes. and yes, and as you said, uh, yeah, taking control of uh, the statues area is one of the main uh, aspects of the game. So yeah, there's a this is optional aesthetic, but it adds a lot uh, yes. when you have. Them. Um, one of the things also I wanted to remind everybody about, so we are uh, taking pre-orders for all the games right now. You can either contact your GTS sales rep or you can just go online to gtsdistribution.com and place an order that way. Um, if you do pre-order before March 25th, you will be able to get a two-week advance release as a brick and mortar store. So that is a great thing to do. You are able to pre-order after that, that deadline. You just obviously won't be eligible for the release. So if you do want to get it and have an early release advantage, it's definitely a good thing to do before March 25th. The other thing that helps us do, as Sam mentioned earlier, as this is going into production right now, um, we take the next roughly about maybe 20 to 30 days to collect those pre-orders. That helps us uh, with Mythic give them actual true numbers of what retailers are looking for, what they need to add to their print run so that we're making sure to bring in the right amount and not have any issues about allocations or any concerns or anything like that, which is really, really good. Um, Kylie just said, I came in late. <clears throat> I came in late, so I missed it. What is the release date? Uh, so right now it's targeted around Gen Con. Um, but as uh, Leo mentioned earlier, the coronavirus, our lovely new friend around the world, is impacting different things. So there may be some things that we have to follow up on that. So right now, I would say probably sometime in Q3 is the, the safest bet right now, depending on manufacturing. So, yep. Awesome. That is all of the questions that, oh, hang on. Uh, is there an early release for the copy of the demo game? Uh, yeah, great question, Manuel. Um, so we haven't worked out the demo piece of it just yet, but once we do, we'll make sure to get that out to everybody. And again, we do have a little bit of time now and when the game is released. So we'll talk about the demo options uh, offline. We'll get everything together. Uh, Jason just said, Scott, the website says 319 for order due date. 325 which the answer is 325 so i will make sure to get with our web team and make sure that that's updated the only reason that may say 319 sometimes the website uses an algorithm that will say the the deadline is this day we need orders a couple of days before that so we can then turn a po around in the publisher but no you'll you'll have until the 25th for sure so no no worries on that so Awesome. Well, guys, thank you very much. Really do appreciate you taking the time, especially Leo, you're over in Europe and you're late in the afternoon. And yeah, really and I was outside. So this is why I have my coat. I was <laughs> on an outside meeting, but when I, I saw what time it was, I said, okay, I will go outside, just uh, be ready to answer. So thank no, you. We appreciate, for... we appreciate it. Now, Sam, <laughs> you may be able to answer this one real quick. This is my favorite question. Uh, after we're done here and, and this goes on YouTube and everyone gets to see it, if they want to reach out, if retailers want to reach out to Mythic, what is the best way to reach you guys? Do you have like a sales at box or a, a um, at box? Well, they can, they can contact me, sam at mythicgames.net. 
Okay. Um, that is my email. Uh, they can contact me there. And if I can't answer the question, I'll find, I'll find the person that can. So, okay, perfect. And you will be at Gamma some, right? Yes, and I will be at Gamma. My, myself and uh, Marco Servone will be there uh, at Gamma. He's our head of customer service. So um, we'll both be there and we'd love to talk to you there as well. We'll, okay. we'll both be doing uh, presentations at Gamma as well. I'll be doing one on Super Fantasy Brawl and then he will be doing one on Enchanters, which uh, we just uh, fixed, we, we just had and will eventually be going retail as well. Yep, and Mythic was really nice enough to send us a pre-production copy of it. So GTS is gonna have it in the booth as well. So if you go to Gamma and you can't find Sam for any reason because he's so popular and everybody wants to talk to him, you're welcome to <laughs> <Okay. live> 14. <laughs> Whatever, dude. <laughs> uh, no, hey, you're, you're a known entity, man. People know who you are. Okay. <laughs> you're kind of a big deal. <laughs> awesome. Well, gentlemen, again, Leo, Sam, thank you very much for taking the time. Thank Re you, thank, thank you, you thank retailers. You. I know the retail thank time you. Is Thank you for incredible. watching, guys. <laughs> for sure, for sure. And really do appreciate you guys taking the time. If you do have any questions afterwards, you can always email me as well. I'm going to go ahead and put my email address into the chat, but it's just smorris at gtsdistribution.com. Um, and feel free to reach out any kind of questions happy to help everybody with but again I think this is to sum it up. It is a wonderful game It is a yeah. wonderful company with wonderful people, but it's also something that is Designed to be as successful as it can be in retail, which is a great advantage for our customers So I think it's just tremendous all the way around. So awesome gentlemen. Thank, thank you. you so much Retailers have a wonderful week in your stores and we'll talk to you soon. Take care. See ya. Take care. Bye-bye